not. <laughs> right? Now, I've never heard their dogs. I've never had a two-way conversation with them. We have lots of one-way conversations, but I've never had a two-way conversation with them. So how do I know that one of them desires to please me and one of them does not? Obedience. Obedience, right? So one of my dogs, Jake, Jack Russell, 14 pounds. Bought him on an impulse for my wife at the pet store when we were dating and I wanted to impress her. Bad move. <laughs> but this dog does not desire to please me. He, sh he does not show gratitude towards me. Just to give you an example, when we're sitting at the dinner table, he'll come up and beg. I'll tell him to go sit in the other room. He knows what I'm telling him. He goes and sits in the other room. I turn away and he gradually starts inching his way back to the table again. And when he finally gets back up there, I tell him to go lay back down in the other room. He goes in the other room and lays down. And then he will gradually start inching himself back in again. He's testing me all the time, always. That's his constant state of existence, is testing me, right? Now my other dog, Haley, she's a pit bull. This is my dog, yes. And uh, she came from the pound. Dogs from the pound really are grateful, as it turns out. But Haley, just to give you an example of the way she is, and when we were at our old house, we'd, we put up a chain link fence to, to keep the dogs in. I paid you know, a lot of money for this huge chain link fence. I was all excited about it. I let the dogs out. As soon as I let them out, Haley goes out and immediately jumps over the fence, <laughs> right? And starts running towards the road. And I freaked out, first of all, because I was mad that I paid all that money for the fence. And then second of all, because there's a, a highway right there, you know, a, a very busy road, and I didn't want her to get hit. So I freaked out, grabbed her, yelled at her, threw her inside, told her don't ever jump over that fence again. And in three years, she never did. I would leave her out there for eight hours at a time, nobody's home, and she never once jumped over that fence again. And she will literally follow me from room to room and look for ways to be obedient to me. We can walk into a room and I'll say, Haley, go over there and lay on your pillow. And she will run as fast as she can to get over there and lay on the pillow and look at me like, just like, are you happy? I mean, this is, I just, I just want to make you happy. And she can't wait to show me infection. She wants to please me. So the question I would ask you is, in your relationship with God, which dog are you? Which dog are you? This question will answer. Yeah. This is the same dog you told us crashed in your suitcase. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. I gotta quit telling stories. <laughs> <laughs> you guys you guys know too much. <laughs> but that's the question, guys. Which dog are you? Are you the dog who's constantly testing the limits of God? Are you the dog that's saying, How much can I get away with and it's not a sin? How much can I do? and not make God angry? Or how can I do this in such a way that I don't get caught? Are you testing God? Or are you that dog who's just sitting there at God's feet, just waiting for the chance to show him obedience? Which one are you? That will give you a huge indication, I think, of where your heart in relation to gratitude is. Now, scriptural, a good story of uh, gratitude in the Bible, and this is in 2 Kings, and basically, just to, and I'm, I'm probably, they're Arameans, but I'm going to call them Armenians. I'm just going to tell you right now, I'm going to mess up at some point and call them Armenians. But basically, we're, we're at the city of Israel, and there's four lepers who are sitting outside the gates of uh, Israel. There's a famine going on at the time, so everybody's starving. And there's an army outside that's kind of waiting around, the Arameans, um, and they're going to attack the city. And these four lepers are sitting out there, and basically they decide, you know, if we stay here, we're going to die. We're going to starve to death. So we might as well go out and throw ourselves at the mercy of these Arameans. Uh, maybe they'll give us some food, or maybe they'll just kill us. Either way, we won't be suffering anymore. So they decide to head on out there. But as they get out there, they find that what happened was God had made it sound like to that army that there was horses approaching, clashing cymbals, all these noises, and God totally orchestrated that so that they would flee. So by the time these lepers get to the camp, there's nobody left, right? Just their tents, all their silver, all their gold, all their food, everything is just sitting there, and there's no soldiers there at all. So that's what we're picking up here. It says, when the lepers arrived at the edge of the camp, they went into one tent after another, eating and drinking wine, and they carried off silver and gold and clothing and hid it. Finally, they said to each other, this is not right. This is a day of good news, and we aren't sharing it with anyone. If we wait until morning, some calamity will certainly fall upon us. Come on, let's go back and tell the people of the palace at once. So they went back to the city and told the gatekeepers what had happened. When we went out to the Aramean camp, they said, no one was there. 
The horses and donkeys were tethered and the tents were all in order, but there wasn't a single person around. Then the gatekeeper shouted the news to the people in the palace. Now, a couple things I see in this. First of all, and this is a trend that you'll see all throughout the Bible, is God uses and blesses the humble. You'll see this all throughout the Bible. God uses and blesses the humble. And this goes back to us keeping that humble heart that we talked about earlier. Another thing that I see here is a heart of ingratitude can take you to... That's okay. Another thing I see here is a heart of ingratitude can take us to a bad place really, really quickly. So what happens when these guys show up and they have a heart of ingratitude and they find this gold and silver? What do we see them doing with it? They're hiding it. Hiding it. So what, what do we do when we hide things? It's sin, right? That's one of the ways that you can tell if you're sinning. If you're not planning a surprise birthday party and you're hiding something, <laughs> chances are it's a sin, right? Okay. Another thing we see here is that when they approach it with a heart of ingratitude, something that God intended for good, all the stuff that God provided for the people of Israel uh, suddenly became a bad thing. These guys start to almost immediately move into idolatry, right? This, these things start to take the place that was meant for God in their life. So that's what ingratitude can kind of lead us towards. But then they make a good turnaround, right? So gratitude, what can gratitude result in? When they finally realize that what they're doing is wrong, uh, what do they say? They say, well, let's, let's pray about this for six weeks. Let's think about this for a month, and let's see if we can find somebody else to take our side and tell us it's okay for us to stand out here and keep all this stuff to ourselves. Find an accountant, you know? Do they do that? No, they say, at once. We will go at once, and that's what they did immediately. Once they knew that they were in the wrong, they went at once. And another thing that they learned was they could not keep the day of good news to themselves. And that's really the final thing that I want to talk about when it comes to showing your gratitude towards God. And that's the question that I would ask you guys. Are you keeping your day of good news to yourselves? You know, I can think of about 100 reasons not to share what God has done in my life with someone else. But none of them have anything to do with gratitude. They all have to do with my own fears, my own inadequacies, my own desires at times to please men over my desires to please God. But none of them have anything to do with gratitude. And what I've found is, from just talking to people about God, one of the greatest evangelistic tools that there is is telling about your day with a joyful heart and with a heart of gratitude. You're not coming at people with judgment. You're not coming at people with guilt. You're not coming at people with fear. You're going to burn in hell. You're coming at people with your story and your, your heart filled with gratitude. So those are the things that I would say tonight. What is the appropriate response to God uh, to respond to him with a heart of gratitude? Right? So what was the first one? Get your head screwed on right. Get your understanding of what God's done for you done down correctly. The second one is go to him and tell him. Spend time with him. Not me, me, me time, but God, your time. The third is to learn what he desires for your life and implement it immediately. And the fourth one that honors God and shows gratitude towards God is to make sure that you tell everyone you can about your day of good news. All right? All right, questions for the night. What characteristics of God are you grateful for? For example, patience, love, discipline, He's a great teacher, father, etc. I like this question a lot because it takes the focus off of us and it puts it where it should be whenever we're talking about gratitude, and that's on God, right? So what are the characteristics of God that you've experienced that you're grateful for? Describe how he has revealed these characteristics of himself to you. Discipline, for example, for me. I love the fact that God disciplines me. And the way that I've experienced this is he won't give me an inch of leeway. If I start to go off in the wrong direction, he shuts it down pretty quickly. Uh, sometimes it's humiliating, it hurts, it's embarrassing, but um, I love that because it keeps me on track. And then the final question, how do you respond to him in gratitude? What's your response to that? These characteristics of God that you're grateful for, what's your response to that? And if you guys are really exceptional and you get all the way around the table, there's a bonus round question, and you can kind of just do this as a table. How do you maintain your heart of gratitude for God? Just talk as, uh, amongst the table of you guys so that we don't forget, so that time and the world doesn't steal that away from us. Okay? Leave the religious crap in the parking lot.